Good evening or morning or afternoon or whenever you're listening to this episode of Dust Boot Camp. I am joined by Greg and Alicia from Dust USA. Hello. Hello. <laughs> that, that was like the most unenthused hello I've I've heard from you guys. Hey. But we're starting it over again. Hello. Maybe, maybe I should say that uh, Alicia's in charge of this episode again. <laughs> She's yeah. Yeah. That's what you said last time. <laughs> yeah, re-roll, re-roll the re-roll the intro. Re-roll the intro. Uh we also have uh Nathan with us. From my living room. What? I, 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 I'm in my basement where all good nerds belong. <laughs> oh, gosh. And we are here to talk more about your uh, your start into dust, your, your adventures into the beginnings. And we've been talking about platoons. Uh, before now, we covered the Allies and all their platoons. Uh, we are moving into the Axis and all of their uh, all of their excellent platoons. Unlike the Allies, <laughs> <laughs> the the word "broken" has been pronounced. The the word "broken" has been said, and uh, not by me for once. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, not as awesome as the SSU platoons. Uh, we won't talk about SSU at all, <laughs> ever. There is no SSU. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only good SSU is a dead SSU. <laughs> all right. So diving in, we have uh, the Axis uh, Kampfgruff. Uh, Kampfgruff? I can't pronounce German. Kampfgruppe. <laughs> What's that? Kampfgruppe. See, you say it just as bad as I do. <laughs> Actually, you just say it like a Frenchman. <laughs> that makes him sound pretty awesome, I thought. But... <laughs> so yeah, the, the Platoon, uh, the first one uh, for the Axis in the rule book. Um, so three, com- uh, three units that are required. And it's a mix, uh, basically, between the medium workers, what the... <laughs> What Olivier called really nicely the Panzerkampflaufer two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the also the the other ones that are that have a name that is even more awesome because it's the <laughs> Schützen Panzerlaufer six. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so if. If no one has actually ever seen uh, German words, it it's you know like a, a name for something. It is the individual words jammed together. Yes, because they like to win at Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, oh, for all um, the Z. Uh, oh, man, my my the randomness in my brain it just dropped it. But um, there, there's actually you know like. There's several languages that do it, just like uh, when they say that um, Eskimos have 100 words for snow. It's not that they have 100 words for snow. It's that they have 100 words describing, you know, like, it's snowy outside. The snow is deep. But it's all jammed together. You know, and, and that's it's actually a certain entomology or, you know, yeah. So, uh, you know, weird stuff. Somebody will correct me probably in comments somewhere. Yeah, my, my German is extremely limited, uh, so I will I will apologize mm-hmm. for everything that has been mispronounced during this podcast. It's okay, you're American then. Exactly. <laughs> Americans uh, yeah. don't apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, platoon that is uh, really straightforward. Uh, you play these walkers, so Luther, Ludwig, Jag, Luther, Lothar, uh, Prince Luther, you know, uh, Sturm Luther or Stumo. And you're going to have on the row of a faction logo, move and fire uh, on the activation of the walker when you when you activate it. Uh, how can I say that? The, this is uh, surprisingly awesome. <laughs> I don't know how that can be surprisingly awesome since uh, one of the Allies' best pilots... <laughs> Has that that that's the one ability that makes it the Allies' best pilot. 
<laughs> exactly. So it's surprisingly awesome because at first when you read it, you're like, ah, it depends on, on the dice roll. And it's one die, it, and it's only on the faction logo, so it's 33% chance. And on the paper, it's like, eh, you know, especially when you have to spend, like, so many points in walkers. But that's the secret. When you spend so many points in walkers, at a point, one of them is going to activate properly with the move and fire. And even if only one of them activates with that, that makes it really fantastic. So because none of these walkers are bad. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the list that is available for the for the Panzer uh, 2, okay, you will, you will have, uh, okay, the very anecdotic uh, Berge Luther, but you will have the Ludwig, the Lothar, the Luther, the Loth, I mean, <laughs> the Lohengrin, the Flak Luther, it's end, obviously, the Jag Luther that has been integrated in that. So that's really... Uh, a huge amount of walkers with a lot of versatility and they all have uh, either an anti-tank weapon and artillery or an anti-tank weapon uh, and uh, some uh, machine guns everywhere it's really a very good amount of walkers with a lot of choices so it's really really easy to build a list that is going to be efficient and you said said that some of those have uh have artillery right Yes, the Lothar, for example, is an artillery. So right. you can have the Lothar and the Lohan Green. So to to just add on to that, so it's it's artillery that so it means that you can somebody else can shoot it for you. Yes. So looking at the platoon rule, it's not just the walkers, it's any Sturm Grenadier recon squads. Yes. <laughs> which means that, you know, A, they're extremely cheap. Yes. And you can, they have camouflage, at least uh, the, most, most the recon. Sturm Grenadier recon squad, no, they just have scout and grenade. Do they just have scout and grenade? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so they can run out, and you know, granted, they could they could be shot at, but they're what two three points. Uh, they are no the the recon squad is the complete squad of five, so it's 10. oh it's, okay. See, I was I was thinking that uh, I was thinking an observer squad. No, 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 no. They are really a genuine squad, but it's a squad with uh, four assault rifle, one machine gun, and three Panzer Faust. All right, so it's even it's even deadlier than I thought. Yes. Not as cheap as I was thinking. But still, a massive pain in the backside. Yeah, but it's... you can you can send these out, and they also get to roll for move and fire. Yes, which means that if you have a bunch of your artillery walkers sitting in the back, that unit could possibly move forward and then fire the artillery. No, they don't have an artillery observer, but oh, you, they they don't. But you can still play some observers. Use the artillery. Uh, and when you and then still activate your artillery and use a move and fire, so it's it's the it's really a straightforward platoon. There's no really big shenanigans behind it, but it's just that it makes your your average ten points, eleven points walker uh, worth way much more than that. Well, if it was allies, it would add a nine point pilot to it. <laughs> Actually, so, eleven. Oh, 11. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's being... Tom. Tom has moved and fire on its 11 points. But no, for example, the Ludwig, uh, which is traditionally a tank that is not super popular because anti tank weapons are really rely, uh, reliant on the fact that you're going to roll one die. You know? Right. We're talking now about a, a tank that's going to roll two dice against vehicles, or all vehicles. Mm-hmm. And move and fire is going to be sustained. <laughs> yes. So, because you know you're you're almost crazy if you don't. Exactly. So you're gonna roll two dice uh, against any vehicle up to armor five, and against armor five, for example, it's four damage each. So if you hit with both, knowing that you're sustaining, it's probable you're gonna cause eight damages, meaning that you're gonna destroy the vehicle. Right. Um, and then if you throw in a command squad in there, they can reactivate them. So. Yeah. And Even if you did decide to kind of run for it and you moved it forward, you took the shot, and maybe the shot didn't actually hit, 
You know, you, you could have that command squad that gives you that second chance. Well, actually, the command squad is part of the required units. So when you look at the command unit, you will have the choice between a Ludwig, which is fun, but you don't need it as a common unit. <laughs> or you can take the Prince Luther and the Sturm Grenadier common squad. Ah, so is that, that actually two separate units then at, for the command? Uh, so that means that you have to take both at the same time. So Prince Luther and Sturm Grenadier common squad. Right, but if you take the Ludwig, you don't take the Sturm Grenadier command squad. Uh, exactly, you only okay. you only take one for the required platoon. You can take the other one uh, if you want in your army list, but it it's just a supporting unit. It's not the common unit. But the mm-hmm. secret is to take the Prince Luther and the Sturm Grenadier command squad because the Prince Luther is a common vehicle. Right. So now you have your common squad that is going to actually re-roll <laughs> their, their special actions for officer and, and all. So it's just, I mean, really it's a platoon that is fantastic. It's really, it's just that you have a ton of small informations like the Strong Grenadier Recon Squad that is part of the bonuses, the Strong Grenadier Common Squad that is the common unit and these kind of things. Everything is good, but needs to be read carefully so that you really realize of uh, how good it is you know it's really that so I, I think i think my ears aren't working because i thought you said that this was a, was rather straightforward and not full of shenanigans <laughs> it, there's no <laughs> shenanigans in the way you play it but you read, <laughs> read the page, the yeah, page you read is the... really filled with the uh, with information and because there are so many german words honestly it's really complicated to read it <laughs> right when you're, um, when you're done re- reading the first three lines, you already have a headache. <laughs> Unless you're German, then you know. Unless you're German, German then it's then just, a, just a cakewalk. Then you're looking at us going, why are you having a problem with this? Yes. <laughs> I don't understand what your malfunction is. <laughs> um. So yeah, very straightforward platoon. Uh, no big secret in it. You basically play what you need to play in it, and then you add even more walkers to it, and you go to town. Uh, there's really no, I mean, there's no no question to ask. No, it's really really easy, straightforward, and simple and magnificent. I I faced this platoon a few times, and yeah. it hurts. <laughs> It, it's not a fun one for me to see. Uh, it is. Yeah. It, it is daunting, definitely, yeah. Or I should say it's not It's not fun when you're on the, the, the side of the table that's looking <laughs> down the barrel. It's really fun for the person playing it. Let's not uh, forget also that the, <laughs> the vehicles, the, the, the medium walkers, all have smoke launchers also. Yo, man. So coming out, firing, popping smoke to make sure that no one gets a shot at you. Exactly. Uh, unless it's an airplane, then uh, it yeah. doesn't matter. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, that's that's filthy. I mean, really, it's... <laughs> and, and, you, and you have a chance to get move and fire. Mm-hmm. Whew. Just, you know... <laughs> that I mean, you know, it's that's that's pretty... probably the the coolest command vehicle in the game. That that thing is packs a wallop. The uh, the Prince Luther. The Prince the Luther. Luther. It is um it is a fun vehicle. It, uh, I'm not sure. I would say it's the best because right now I have a huge weak spot for the Dodge uh, common truck from the Desert Scorpions. Mm-hmm. Because it's uh, really stupid to have so many machine guns on a, such a small vehicle, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Prince Luther is really interesting, um, and also packs an anti aircraft gun that is also really useful. So well, it's, at, at armor three with three hits, you have to put some dedication to take it down with, I mean, with six it, hits. It, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. The armor three on a vehicle is tricky because anti-tank units will have the firepower to kill it. So it's really um, that's where the, the I think the common the the smoke launchers from the other vehicles are going to be important because you're going to be able to cover efficiently your heavy worker 
I, I should say your large vehicle because there's nothing heavy in this in this walker, but uh, your large vehicle will be covered by the smoke uh, coming from all the other walkers for the first round, allowing your common unit to comfortably reactivate them. So um, it's it, it's really um, it's really a platoon that allows you to play everything together in a very Again, straightforward, but really reliable way. So everything is secure a little bit more. Uh, everything is a little less fragile and everything is a little more efficient all the time. So you add this extra potential to every single walker that is on the table. And that's worth a lot. I mean, hmm. so. I don't know, though. Um, you know, I, I just pulled up the uh, the allies, you know, Dodge truck for the command. Yeah. So it's eight points. You get four machine guns. Yeah. You get three, one of which is a dual machine gun here. And then that anti aircraft gun. You've got the same speeds. Mm -hmm. You've got one more armor on the Prince Luther. And you've got three more health, which, like you were saying, generally isn't going to matter. Even at, even at armor yeah. three, it's, it's going to, you know, most likely anything that hits it. Is, is going to kill the damage track, but still, you know, it is that little bit more, and it's it's two points more. I don't know that that Prince Luther is kind of a is, is not a bad uh, bad deal. No, no, it's it's a really good vehicle as always with the with the Axis. They have very good vehicles and quite cheap. But for example, the the advantage of the common truck from the Desert Scorpions is that you're going to have two more dice against air aircraft on average. Okay, on the whole vehicle, so that's that can change a, a few things. So because it's all machine guns, there's no heavy machine gun, so they are all si situated on top of the vehicle, so they can all aim at the sky. So it makes it a little bit more versatile. So that's the reason why I like it. Right. Yeah, but you'll be you'll be bummed out, Greg, when I suppress it with Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> true vehicle level two can uh, actually i'm not sure that you can do it with yeah the sniper rifle can do it actually sure so, can <laughs> you're a horrible person <laughs> <laughs> hey i say she can shoot at it she might not be able to damage it but you know it's okay shooting is enough she just needs to hit just needs to hit. <laughs> exactly and she will hit <laughs> Yes, but yeah, she, she's shenanigans in a whole yeah. bunch. Platoon is really funny. Uh, the the heavy walkers from the Axis are really hilarious. When you see that the Stummel can carry twelve people, for example, it's it's always funny to to read that. Oh yeah, you can put so many so many different uh, units, you know, and have them shoot half of their weapons on each side. So it's really fun. I mean, I, I like, for example, to have a uh, Strong Luther, but you can do it also with the Prince Luther if you don't have the command squad in it, but that would be stupid. But if you take the Strong Luther, for example, and you put some uh, heavy grenadier uh, engineer squad in it, and you just pop the the flamethrowers from the sides of the of the vehicle, uh, every 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 time someone tries to come close to you, you just burn them to death. It's really really funny. So you can even add uh, you can advance with your vehicle as a crab. Instead of moving straight, you know, you're, you're moving <laughs> ways, and you just burn them. So, yeah, because the rest is on turret, so you don't care, you know. So it's really, it's really funny. Yeah. But, yeah, Platoon, really, really straightforward, really simple, really interesting, uh, with a lot of possibilities. So that's pretty cool. The next one, <laughs> the Axis Storm Grenadier Platoon. So, <clears throat> well, how can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> three units uh, where you basically have the choice between three squads. Uh, as a leader, you will have well the two two Wehrmacht heroes, Stefan and Manfred, and then the common squad. And uh, the ability is that the platoon leader may perform a get moving your bunch of monkeys special action. And you can target a strong grenadier unit only, but not a heavy grenadier unit. Uh, and it can be done as a third action every time you activate. So uh, the secret here is that 
that allows you to roll three times your get moving your bunch of monkeys on your common squad. That's really the the big thing. Uh, what makes it really really fun to play. So you take your command squad. You already you are already used when you're at that point of the game to roll two dice because you're gonna use your two actions to get moving your bunch of monkeys, and then you're gonna take a third die and do exactly the same. So uh, now I, I know it says that you cannot you know you do it as a third action. Mm-hmm. Um, you know so. The way you're saying it, you're ca- you know, it's the possibility that you're going to fail, or the likelihood that you you know you're going to fail the first one and the second one. Yes. Um. But my question is, I guess you know, if you succeed, I know that your activation is supposed to end. Does that let you? Does it extend it? Because that was what I, no, what no. I read the first time was you it's, know, get moving a bunch of monkeys is really unequivocal. Every time you succeed, your activation ends immediately. You could have two actions left. It's too bad for you. You should have right. done something else with it before. Right. So it's really it's just that it's either you use your unit as a pure common unit, an officer unit, and you try to reactivate something and you make it reliable by having this third action. Right. Or you decide that you're going to put it on Manfred or or Stefan that are really not meant to be uh, leaders of a whole army like that. And you just use it as an eventual third action just for shits and giggles. Definitely. Okay. And, and, you know, that was kind of what the impression I was getting the first time around, because you could also do it where, you know, you have the mechanic fixing something up or you have the medic, you know, healing people a couple of times, and Uh then you can use it because, it says it's a third action, and it's the only action you can take as your third action. Exactly. So, you know, it's even possible if you're, well, I guess if you're using medic actions or anything like that, you're most likely not in a command vehicle. No, obviously not. But the thing is, for example, you can have um, this one. You don't have to have your common squad in a vehicle. So you put your common squad on ground. Uh, you just lost someone that you didn't want to lose in the in the unit. You use your first action with the medic, bring back the the officer, and then you get moving a bunch of monkeys two times anyway. Yep. So that 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 can. It's really again, uh, all the all the Axis platoons are going to be really a lot about reactivating and and doing these kind of things to really represent the the discipline of the the Axis armies. And this one really does the job perfectly with uh, three units, the Assault Squad, the Tank Hunter Squad, and the Recon Squad that are really uh, the the core units of a, of a strong Grenadier army. And whatever unit you're going to choose to reactivate is going to be efficient. So Right. So the um, one of the shenanigans I was just thinking, so it's, it's only it's limited to the whatever unit you put in command of the platoon overall. But yes. If you took multiple command units, what you could what you, you what you could do is have that unit that's doing something, you know, it, it could be out there doing the healing and all that. It uses its get moving a bunch of monkeys. And then you can have somebody react, you know, another unit reactivate that command unit afterwards. Or, you know, later on in the turn. Mm-hmm. So that they can do all the you know all three of those actions again granted you're kind of wasting another command unit but at the same time uh, you know i mean it's at, it's at least something viable if you uh if you did need them doing more the waterfalling of of officer actions is really useful but you can indeed think about these kind of things when you're in a pinch uh what let's say mid game you started to lose some units and you really need to kill this, this horrible unit fla- uh, like this Flamingo that has three heavy launch, heavy flamethrowers that are coming at you, you know, and you really need to kill it uh, with extreme prejudice and you need to reactivate this tank hunter squad. And you can indeed, uh, if, your, if your officer is a little far or this kind of things and you lost your radio, I don't know. It, it would be really super anecdotal, but it's, it's something that you can think about, yeah. Well, and and so what I'm thinking, you know, what I'm thinking is, you know, they they could be out there, you know, helping, 
you know, really doing the medic actions, you know, so, you know, it, it may even end up being that, uh, yeah, uh, you just, you have a, you know, situation where you needed to do that. And you could have that other command unit in a command vehicle, you know, ordering them to reactivate, yeah. you know, partly to reactivate any unit out there or, you know, I mean, just something, you know. Well, I, yes. I had a situation in my head and it ran away <laughs> um, where, you know, I was like, yep, I could see that being really useful there. Uh, you can have these kind of situations, but it's really um, the the tr the the big trick is really just to make your officer action on that squad in particular extremely efficient and yes. reliable. You, know, you go from a thirty three percent chance to an almost eighty uh, percent, so that's that really helps you reactivate when you need it. So you can also reload. Let's not forget that because. When you have units that have three Panzer Faust in the unit, you're really happy to be able to reload them. Yes. Um, oh, definitely. So yeah, it's um, particularly, particularly if those Panzer Faust missed. Yes. <laughs> so it, it's really, um, I mean, it's really, really um, uh, about reliability and about making the the platoon extremely um, efficient all the time. It's it's really that. I really don't see any interest uh, into putting Manfred or Stefan as the common unit, uh, apart from a fluff point of view. Uh, but really, they wouldn't do much of a third action to reactivate a unit with one die. Uh, right. Again, useful for just the sake of the fluff, but for the sake of efficiency... Uh, not that much. So uh, there's one regret is that it's only for units level two, and the common squad is all, also only the common squad level two. So you cannot use, for example, the Desert Fox. That would be really funny as a general uh, to put in a common squad, but it doesn't work <laughs> on this one. So yeah, it's it's again another platoon that is extremely simple, extremely straightforward. Uh, and it's really all about giving you a, a huge advantage on officer actions. So, the third one for the Wehrmacht, and actually the last one for the Wehrmacht, is uh, one about my favorite units in the Axis Army after the after the Gorillas. Uh, <laughs> It's the, heavy, it's the Heavy Grenadier Platoon. So this one, uh, three choices, one common squad as a common unit, and then assault or flak as combat units. And the platoon bonus says that the platoon leader uh, can target a Wehrmacht Heavy Grenadier unit in or supporting the platoon and give them get moving a bunch of monkeys again. And this time, it succeeds on a roll of faction logo or target. Yes. So, <clears throat> welcome to the world of insanity, where you're going to have a common squad put in a common vehicle. It's going to succeed on 66% <laughs> of the time and re-roll if it fails. <laughs> <laughs> As Ash Barker would say. It's bananas. Exactly. But that allows you to, for example, shoot with your common squad on the first action and then try to get moving your bunch of monkey with only one die because it's a one die that, that has two chances out of three to hit and you can reroll if you fail. So suddenly your common squad is not this one trick pony that always does the same thing all the time to make it reliable. And you have plenty of options with it. And of course, uh, we're talking about uh, very good Armour 3 units. Damn with damage resilience. <laughs> I, uh, you were saying. And a huge amount of firepower, whatever you do. The Flag Squad is... the flag squ um, I was listening to the podcast of uh, the Dust War Journals uh, like three or four issues ago. And they were talking about rediscovering the flag squad 
And they were right, actually. It's a unit that is really underrated for what it can do. And because it has quite an amount of dice. It's, a, it, it's three rocket launchers. So anti-infantry, uh, anti-very light vehicle, but also anti-aircraft and a very reliable anti-aircraft. But it also has an ability called Salvo. That means that for one round, you're going to double the, num- the amount of dice that you roll and you're going to have to reload on the next one. So it's a unit that is really that can saturate your an enemy unit really fast to destroy it and destroy it reliably. Uh, so it's really, really interesting. Of course, you have the Assault Squad, uh, which is, again, as we mentioned it before, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> so the Assault Squad is 14 points of hatred against anything that is infantry, uh, 12 dice per guy against infantry level 1, that's 36 dice uh, for just the sake of having your opponent say, what the fuck, you can put uh, Lara in it and enjoy move and fire oh. on the unit while you're oh. still adding 12 dice. So now you're at 48 dice with move and fire, so they can yeah. move, sustain fire with 48 dice. All of them, each each uh, salvo of 12 can be separated on a different target. So you can really put a lot of hurt on a lot of units in a minimum amount of time. Obviously, you're going to have a target big as your face uh, on the unit because no one wants that to happen, uh, apart from you, I mean. So it's really, <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, fun stuff. The common squad that I mentioned at the beginning, also has salvo on the rocket launcher. So you really can be really efficient with everyone for the for a minimum contribution of three units and a common vehicle that is, again, dirt cheap. So that would be a shame not to use it. So, and you, you don't even have to take the uh, command vehicle. I mean, it would make, it makes the most sense. It really, it really helps because that really makes your, your one die even if, if it's 66% chance, it makes your one die really reliable. Because even if you miss, you can re-roll again. So that's thanks to the common vehicle. So you could just put them on foot or outside of a vehicle or in, or in another vehicle and just count on the 66% chance. But I like, I like the chances of rolling a little bit better. And again, the, the Prince Luther is not a bad vehicle at all. And for 10 really? points, it's really not worth sweating, you know, when you roll your die. So, Right. Uh, you know, mm. to me, it was also the ability to mm. use some of the um, some of the other, uh, you know, functions of the command squad, like the medic and stuff like that. Oh, that, yeah. That came into mind. You know, they, oh. they can't be in the command vehicle. True. So, and... With any heavy units, you suddenly, you know, you're down to three guys per unit. So a medic is, you know, kind of important if, you know, people start getting picked off. Yeah. Granted, I know if I'm playing Greg, you know, his rule of thumb is take the medic first, no matter what. Yes. So, so the, you, the you really want to keep that medic. Thing. It's all about the medic. Of course, with this one, you know, the officer does kind of matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, every, everything matters when you play a heavy grenadier. There's none of them is you know innocuous enough that you can ignore it. Because even the the officer, even by itself, it still has twelve dice against infantry. So <laughs> there is nothing that is bad in the heavy grenadier. So just need to take them out with snipers. Exactly, well, it's really something that you yeah that at a point you really need to have this sniper that is going to help you taking taking off the medic and then the officer so that means at least two snipers that are reliable so and that's the reason why putting them in a vehicle can be really useful because then they cannot be targeted so and you're going to have to take down the vehicle which again is not really a big challenge but still it's one activation that you your opponent will have to sacrifice doing that so it uh, yeah so yeah uh, not forgetting that because they are in armor 3 they can give their orders everywhere on the table also this is so true that's convenient 
but yeah, it's it's again another platoon that is based on reactivation and having this saturation of your opponent, uh, and it's really really interesting to play. Uh, these minis are among my favorites because they're fun. Uh, yeah, really the over the top side of dust. So I like that. And you can, <laughs> of course, uh, complete the platoon with other units that are not just assault squad and flag squad. And then you go into engineer or anti tank, and you can really put a lot of hurt on any on anything on the table, especially when you can reactivate them. Definitely, and then if you start pairing them up with other uh, with the other platoons, yeah. Um, uh, typically, typically, um, it's a platoon that is that doesn't uh, take much points uh, by itself. If you just limit it to your to the three units that you that are required, and it's a platoon that you can play comfortably with the the comp group platoon that we mentioned at the beginning. So you have your vehicles that have moving yep. fire, and then you have this. Uh, platoon that allows you to you know put some hurt where your vehicles are just for example wounding some stuff and not finishing them then you have other units to do that and that's pretty convenient so definitely I uh, I like it yeah it's, uh, well, it's pretty cool no I don't like it because at some point I'm going to have to kill it and no, I mean, you like it because at a point you're going to play Axis. Uh, I mean, you know, this is true. That's why I buy my kid stuff. I mean, exactly. at a point I'll just be playing it all. <laughs> I just so at a certain try- point everyone plays Axis. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's, it's hard not to. You, you sneeze and you end up with Axis. You're like, oh, oh <laughs> look at that. I, I got another Axis unit. How did that happen? <laughs> Wash your hands, don't play Axis. <laughs> Everyone, if you play Dust, if you play Dust, you have to own at least some gorillas. Exactly. How could you not own gorillas? <laughs> um, next one? Yes, all right. So, ooh, now now we're uh, you know moving into uh, blood, blood Scruts. Yeah, so the Blood Scruts mm-hmm. Corpse Platoon. Uh, we're talking about the laser guys here, uh, and pew, Sigrid. Pew. So Sigrid, the uh, mm-hmm. completely mental, uh, uh, crazy uh, uber bitch of the Blood Cruts. She's ah. <laughs> she's amazing, <laughs> but she's, she's just <laughs> motivated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, she's. If she was a dude, you wouldn't call her that. No, she would be an ale. Uh-huh. But, but <laughs> um crazy Jimmy is crazy for a reason. Yeah, so l- let's not be gender specific. He's not crazy, She's he's a eccentric. <laughs> they uh, had much more creative names for people who were different back in the day. No, let's remember that Sigrid uh, basically leads by killing. Okay, so every time she's frustrated, she takes one soldier at random and kills him. Just some people shop. <laughs> Uh, and other people commit mass murder. Um, <laughs> other people, other people stress kill. It's 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 yeah. uh, it's, it's total. Yes, uh, you're they right. They signed the paperwork when they when they decided to volunteer. <laughs> they understood. Let's remember that it's a character also that has a Panzer Faust with unlimited <laughs> ammo, a laser pistol, but he's expert with the knives. <laughs> yes. She's a woman of many skills. Yes. <laughs> a Renaissance woman. Exactly. <laughs> They're going to stress she kill someone. That knitting was not her thing. Men's uh, insana and corpore sano. <laughs> She's a fine woman. Yes. So I would date her. Sigrid, the absolute uh, epit- epitome uh, of what Blood Cruz is. She's crazy. The faction is crazy. And their platoons are crazy. So oh, they're literally bananas. <laughs> for some of them, yes. <laughs> so the first one is uh, the one about the regular soldiers of the Blood Cruts. So this elite core with uh, these very scary masks uh, on their faces and a ton of lasers everywhere. Uh, 
as long as Sigrid is on the table, laser grenadiers and heavy laser grenadiers in or supporting the Blood Cross platoon can never be suppressed and, of course, never oh. under fire. So <laughs> this is really convenient. This is a, an army that never loses activations. And, or, and again, th through suppression, because you can still be stunned. But not losing activations on, arm, on an army that relies heavily on shooting, shooting your face is really, really nice. Um, it's all the more nice that they received a nice boost, a nice boost recently uh, since the profile of the laser grenadier has been modified uh, a little bit and their weapons are now better than ever. Yeah, because that's, that's what we needed. <laughs> Actually, yes, it was needed for them, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it, it was a, a good unit, but it was really not uh, withstanding the, comp the comparisons with uh, other units from the same block for the same price. And now they really are a unit that you can count on when you need to put some damages on infantry. And for lasers, it's kind of novel because they are not necessarily anti-infantry weapons. They are really good at shooting vehicles, like extremely good at shooting vehicles. On infantry, they were they are traditionally a little bit less good because the laser technology in dust relies on the fact that the laser is a continuous uh, flux Screen. that shoots straight, and the longer it stays on the target, the more reliable it is. Right. So obviously on an infantry that is really small, keeps moving and, and dies super fast, lasers are not that great. So yeah, again, uh, you have to take three units plus the common unit. The common unit is obviously Sigrid. Uh, and then on the units, so the first one is the laser grenadier. The choice on the unit two is going to be either laser grenadier or heavy laser grenadier or Strangely enough, a zombie grenadier squad. <laughs> and on unit three, you're going to have laser grenadier, heavy laser grenadier, laser tank hunter squad, and again, the zombie grenadier squad. Uh, I would say that you should always have the zombie grenadier squad in your army uh, because they're really sturdy, thanks to the zombie squad, uh, and they pack a million different weapons they do. that allow you to be comfortable shooting at anything. Uh, their machine gun is even a, a I wouldn't say a good anti-aircraft, but a last chance anti-aircraft weapon when you're, when you're out of them. Because Blood Cruts traditionally has an issue doing anti-aircraft uh, tactics. Uh, so it's something that where suddenly you can have a little bit more chance. Um, the laser tank hunter also has this heavy machine gun that shoots, you know, the 12 dice against infantry, but it has also some anti-aircraft options. And, the, and the, the, the heavy laser that is on it is probably the best heavy weapon that the Axis has on an infantry right now. Uh, shoots a lot of dice uh, against vehicle. You're going to shoot between eight, two and eight dice, depending on the size of the, the enemy vehicle, at range 10. So it's really, really reliable. Um, it's really something that you should have in your army when you play Blood Cruts all the time. And even when you don't play Blood Cruts, it's something that you should think about uh, when you play because really it's a, it's a good support weapon. Um, the heavy laser grenadier squad are something in between. It's a, it's a unit that I would play in a vehicle, not by itself because there are only three of them. They're kind of fragile, and their firepower really relies on re-rolling your dice. So you really want to be comfortably sitting, you know, in a vehicle, being protected from being shot before you have the chance to do something. Uh, and then you can just shoot quietly, normally, your six dice against infantry or your 15 dice against a vehicle level one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's 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 a good unit by itself, but I'd rather play the others in the platoon uh, because they offer more options. And again, this entire craft options that is really necessary when you play Blood Cruts. So 
I would not hesitate to play another zombie grenadier squad, or if you chose as your unit three the laser tank hunter, definitely the one zombie grenadier squad. So then obviously you can expand from there. From there, um, on the page uh, of the rule book, you will see that there's a Wotan that is shown, a Wotan AR actually with the extra uh, armor. Uh, it's a good choice. Again, uh, you rely on lasers. Uh, we're going to release, actually, uh, it's uh, next month. Next month, we're releasing a Root Cruits army box. And inside, you will have the Wotan and Wotan AR2, uh, which are exactly the same, but they have an additional machine gun under the chassis of the Walker. So that's going to be a good option. Uh, again, against infantry and heavy vehicles. So it's a good walker. But my choice with, again, I told told that a million times when we were talking about the Axis in general, but the Sturmkönig is always a good option when you want some anti-aircraft option. And I would also go with planes, and I would not hesitate to sacrifice the faction bonus to, again, choose a plane that is really meant to have air domination, like, for example, the Exe or the Geist. Yes, that are, that are really reliable against aircrafts thanks to their radar and also have some anti-infantry options thanks to either the gliding bomb or the additional uh, autocannon. So they're Luftwaffe, but that's worth it. So, yeah, it's a platoon that is really uh, meant for you to be able to advance all the time. Uh, get on the objective and you can get piled up on the objective and get shot uh, at a lot of times and not be scared of losing your activations. So definitely worth it. It's disgusting (laughs) because all I can think of, and you know, we haven't, we haven't touched on it yet, but if you combine this with Frank's unit as well, yes. Um, which I guess, you know, if we're, if we're about to progress, we might as well touch on that one. I know we're skipping a page or two. Oh, if you want to talk about it right now, we can. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. I was just scrolling down. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll jump back to those other two. Okay. Because, yeah, with, uh, with, with Frank, oof, you take, uh, you know, one of those Grenadier squads, you have to take Frank von Stein. Um, and then the the Heinrich, mm-hmm. which, which is a nice little walker. An anti-aircraft solution. <laughs> exactly, an anti-aircraft solution. So, you know, that, that kind of does address, you know, your uh, your comments before on, you know, the, the weaknesses, you know, kind of needing something. It's not yeah. the best. But, uh, <laughs> but any unit that is a target of an attack or sustained attack by a zombie unit in or supporting the uh, Blutkrutz uh, Kampengruf uh, von Stein platoon receives an underfired token in close combat regardless of whether any hits are generated or any health was lost. If it already has an underfire token, it's replaced with suppression instead. So anybody that's attacked by it and I didn't I didn't actually end up finishing that then any units within range 3 also get an under fire that are in line of sight under yeah. fire or suppression token it's it is it is crazy so this, this is my favorite platoon in the whole game <laughs> I've said it a million times, but this is my favorite platoon in the whole game because it really, it really is a platoon that is first really easy to to put into action, but it's also a platoon that really weighs a, a lot on the the ability that your opponent has to retaliate. Every single activation that they are going to make once you start getting in melee is going to be conditioned to the fact that they can roll dice properly. And that is morally something that can really, really hinder your opponent's ability to think properly. Mm-hmm. That can really screw with their activations. That can really screw with their tactics. 
uh, that can really uh, ruin some plans that they have because they suddenly they don't have these two actions that they need. Uh, and that means that on the next round, they have to do it all again. So it's, <laughs> it, it can really be, it can be completely useless. If the guy is really lucky with his dice, he's going to cancel everything and be done with it or just put back into under fire and you, you have done nothing, but it's free. It's basically free. And it's the only possibility that you have to put suppression in melee. Right. And, and even if, you know, uh, you know, factoring even in a luck factor, it still has to, as I'm looking, you know, as the opponent, as I'm looking at what I'm going to do, I still have to factor in that they're suppressed and that they might not get unsuppressed. Exactly. You know, so so it changes my tactics or, you know, messes with my plans and maybe I have to move some stuff around in the, you know, just in case they don't manage to get out of suppression. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it totally screws with with your opponents just planning, you know, uh, you know, despite, you know, the possibility of a luck factor. Yeah. Fun byproduct also of this platoon is that this is the only way you can put a suppression token on a unit that is in a vehicle. Because True. normally they cannot be targeted, but here you don't target them. They just need to be in range three of you when you are in melee with something. So that that is really fun to do when, you, for example, you attack the vehicle in which they are. You don't even need to cause damages on it. You don't even need to hit it, actually. You just need to declare one melee attack. So yes. you, you, me, you melee attack the vehicle and suddenly the unit that is in it is suppressed or under fire. But So well, it, it can really, really screw with a lot of things. It's really funny. My, oh, wait, wait. There, there's side walls on my vehicle. I can't, my guys can't see out of it because you're so close. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the universal boo. You know, so <laughs> no, it's, oh. it, it really it's a it's a very good 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 platoon, um, and all the zombie units are good with it. You can play the straightforward mindless zombies with just a move boosted because they have uh, the the Totenmeister around them. You know, or you can play the Suicide Squad and the Grenadier Squad and just move normally, shoot at something putting an under fire token on them and then go in melee, declare the melee attack and suddenly the unit is suppressed and then you can still kill them. But even if you don't, <laughs> that's, that's that. So it, it really is a, a platoon that gives you a lot of possibilities for absolutely no price because Frank von Stein by himself is good. The zombie grenadier squad, as I told you, is one of the best axis units in the game. Uh, and the Einrich is a small vehicle, really nimble, but with scout and anti-aircraft possibilities. Uh, you can have a first round that is really lethal, and you still have this anti-aircraft solution when you need it. So it's it's really a it's really a platoon that has honestly no flaw, and it's really really easy to build. So that's my favorite in the game. Yeah, for yeah. that reason. I, I can I can understand why that's your favorite. And I mean you already mentioned the the other one that you know would would vie in some ways as one of uh one of my favorites to you know look at or at least to contemplate on paper and uh you know that would be the the zombie swarm uh, <laughs> platoon. Yeah you know, so, which, which is one of the ones that we skipped over. Yeah, the swarm. The swarm is um, well, it's made of mindless zombies and it's a mindless platoon. It's really, uh, I mean, I've talked about uh, straightforward platoons. This one is so straightforward that it's really blunt. It uh, is. It's one Totenmeister, six units of mindless zombies, period. Yep. Nothing else. You And it's absolutely nothing in terms of points. So you can even add to that. I, I trick, think... I think we totaled it up, and it comes out to thirty points. Uh, some, yeah, it's five points per uh, per zombie squad. So yeah, it's uh, oh, and then whatever. What's plus the total master that is nine, I think. Yeah. Perfect. So okay, so it's forty points. Yeah, it's it's really it's really ridiculously low. 
uh, really easy to set up. Uh, I've seen players, uh, one of our Patriots actually uh, from Chicago, uh, Jeff Racco, is playing a swarm like that. That is really funny. Um, and he has like, I don't know, 12 or 13 units on the table. Uh, it's, it's really, um, uh, this is definitely a one trick pony. Uh, and it can be alleviated really easily. But it's a fun platoon to play. And it can really put a ton of hurt on anyone that is not careful enough to choose the targets properly. The two tricks of the of the platoon are first the fact that when you play this platoon, any uh, mindless zombie that activates uh, must make an attack action against a friendly non-zombie unit during their activation. So if they start in range three of a non-zombie unit, so they so that illustrates really the swarm that is in that is going crazy and hitting everything that is alive. Uh, without really making any difference between allies or enemies. Uh, so it is something that you need to be careful with. Uh, a lot of people, for example, got tricked uh, by themselves because they were putting some Einrich vehicles, uh, the one from the Blood Cruts. But because it doesn't have the zombie quality, it can be attacked by the mindless zombies. So you, right. you you have to think about your placement, but again, with so many zombies on the table, at a point it becomes really complicated to not be in range three of them, or it's really something where you don't play vehicles and you're gonna focus only on zombies. Uh, and this is the moment where you should probably think about again the zombie grenadier squad. That is really a good option to shoot at stuff either that flies or that it needs to be sh shot at because they are a little foul. Uh, or you can play the zombie suicide squad also. Um, it's really, uh, I mean, you can put all the zombie heroes also that are all good. I mean, really, none of them is bad, so and they're dirt cheap, so that's worth it. Uh, so you have to be careful with that. The second thing you really need to pay attention to is that the Totenmeister has this huge target on the face. Because it all <laughs> depends on the Totenmeister. Uh, because the Totenmeister uh, is the leader, has the ability of bringing back the zombies, and gives them a move bonus. Obviously, uh, the, all the zombies gain, gain charge thanks to the platoon, so it's a little less important. But the Totenmeister gives them plus one speed right and charge which and charge so charge to get it anyway uh but the the plus one speed really makes a huge difference in range one of of the totenmeister so it's really something when your opponent needs to be uh, a little bit more comfortable for one more round they are going to try and shoot the totenmeister as soon as possible now huh Maybe it's just because it's it is the swarm the swarm thing. Uh, I thought the Totenmeister had something that allowed uh, the Totenmeister to control the zombies to keep their rage from getting out of hand. But I'm not nope. no, seeing no. that. Okay, nothing prevents them from being stupid. <laughs> but <laughs> right. he does he can bring them back? Yes, <laughs> he can. Yes, um, it's more you know it. Totenmeister uh, has to be within a certain range, and if they go running off, you know, I, you know, Totenmeister's sitting there going, "God damn it, not again!" <laughs> and exactly. having, have, you know, especially when they have charge four and they have the you know charge skill, which means they can make a melee attack after they charge or make a march move. Mm -hmm. So they move four. You know, so that could completely throw off any of your plans that you had for that block of them if you happen to, you know, move badly. Yes, it's really your <laughs> your principle, your main uh, difficulty playing this shawl is going to be to really move them properly in a way that makes sense and that doesn't block you. Uh, so it's, re it's really that, the, the principle issue with this 
uh, platoon. But it's so much fun to play so many zombies on the table, uh, just running them around. And it's really scary when you're facing them, to be honest. I faced, um, I have a player in Cincinnati that is extremely good with his blood cruts and uh, does some actually pretty decent results in tournaments. And he has this swarm, uh, this, make, this mix of swarm and uh, Frank von Stein platoon. And that's really, really worrying when you play it because half of the zombies are going to basically put you uh, uh, on suppression. And then the other half is just going to wreck your face because you're just in the middle of the table and you shouldn't be there. And, <laughs> and at a point, you have to prioritize your targets and you're in a, pos- in a position where you don't know which one you should kill first. And you really need to focus a lot of attention on each unit every time you shoot at it because with the zombie save, on an accident, they can not die. And, yeah. I mean, it happens that you're going to roll, you know, 17 dice against a unit and in the end you're gonna kill one guy and oh god i hate that yeah but it can happen and you need to think about it so it's really a matter of really staying focused but again when you have this non-stop line of zombies running towards you and closing in especially at speed four with charge uh (laughs) yeah no i mean that's you know across the grid and map. That's that's basically in your lines. Two rounds. In two rounds. Yeah. So you know they're getting over there and they're wailing on you mm-hmm. super fast. And every time you shoot them, you've got Totenmeister going oh bloop. Because yeah. how I always imagine running it is that you're going to just have a you know three or two ranks of three. Yeah, you know, going across and Totenmeister is in that in that middle one. Yes, so that she is range one to all of them. That's yeah, that's that's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. You you are just charging straight ahead, and if you really wanted to be, you know, kind of thematic, you could you know even do it where it's you know one Totenmeister. You know, I mean, you know, try and make a pseudo V. Little hard on gridish. <laughs> So, a little, little hard on gridded, but you know. You, you, so what you're you can, saying there, Nick, is before you start that, they're going to start quacking. Definitely. I mean, why wouldn't you quack? Quacks quack, give you an extra quack, die. Quack. <laughs> if, you, if you if you really uh, you play to your weakness a little bit too, and then pick up uh, add an Angela or a sniper squad for some support there, mm-hmm. and take out the flamethrowers. It's exactly nothing can stop you. Yes, it's exactly that. You just have to be careful with the swarm because, again, Angela not being zombie, that means that she might be attacked by you. Gotta put her on the other end of the day. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, outside of range three, outside of range three, (laughs) tricky deployments. But yeah, that's that's yeah, exactly. that loner skill. She doesn't loner and particularly w- wants to be a loner when it comes to zombies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or you stick them with uh, you know, you have the Frank von Stein unit with you as well. So, you know, you've got those those grenadier zombies running up shooting stuff as they move up. Yep. And then attacking and suppressing and so the two main enemies of the zombies are artillery that removes your infantry save. So that means no zombie save. Yep. And flamers that remove all saves anyway. So you get nothing. Yes. So anything that has a range two flamethrower, like a fireball, uh, even range three, actually. Or a heavy mortar from anything is really something that is going to cause you a lot of worries uh, because you're going to be packed in your as with your swarm because you, again you're limited by the space available on the table and at a point uh, when you get hit by an artillery on four units at the same time it really makes you sweat way too much for your own for your own health so, <laughs> so yeah you have to, <clears throat> airplane <exactly>. support <laughs> <laughs> aircraft 
Zombies and aircraft. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> that's exactly that. You don't even that's perfect. That's ex, that's exactly what you should do with the points that you have left. You should take an aircraft and take care of these kind of threats as soon as possible without being eaten by your own zombies. <laughs> exactly. The, the aircraft cannot be hit, so that's a very good solution. Uh, on that, I would play probably either the Blitz if you expect a lot of vehicles. Or, but again, you have enough anti-vehicle uh, tricks with your zombies because really they can destroy vehicles like it's paper. Uh, but I would definitely think about uh, Falker, for example, uh, that can really be useful against uh, this kind of infantry that is a little pesky, like heavy mortars, all these kind of things. Um, that I think it's a good option against them. Uh, Gosh, and for how cheap for how cheap the zombie platoon is. Yes. Can, and the uh, Falcon, uh, and the, Fal- the Falcon is a cheap yeah. oh. <laughs> You could take Blitz and Falcon. Yeah. Or you can play a Falcon and an Adler. So, Just about. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's it, you, that's really the, the the spirit of this platoon is that you you leave this platoon live its own life and you just make sure that it can live long enough to get to the other side of the table because it's sure that your opponent is going to stay on their deployment line if you play your schwa, So <laughs> <laughs> I know that the mission says I want to get over there, but I am more than happy right here, guys. <laughs> exactly. What is the scenario? Well, the scenario is to stay alive right now. <laughs> The scenario is they're going to come charging at me. I need to just kill them all. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, last but not least, uh, arguably the best platoon in, in the in the whole world, if it's not in the game. <laughs> um, it's the Kampfaffen Marcus platoon. Gorilla! Gorillas and more gorillas, and it's sprinkled with gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marcus as the leader, and four units of gorillas, either pioneer or just plain old gorilla. Uh, the rules are given by the platoons are simple. One, when they do a charge action, they cannot receive a suppression token. Uh, for example, with a reactive attack that would normally interrupt it. Uh, and second, Marcus gained the following skill. Get moving, you lousy bunch of humans, which is basically get moving, you bunch of monkeys, but oh, uh, reversed. <laughs> so he can... Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's sensitivity. He can, exactly. So he can reactivate a, a gorilla unit. Uh, the platoon is extremely straightforward, it's really in the spirit of the zombie swarm, but instead of playing a multitude of very cheap, very low-grade troops, you're going to play a multitude of elite uh, melee troops. Uh, They're still cheap. They are still cheap, but they are a little less cheap, to be honest. It's eight points for the Gorilla Squad, so it's something that you need to think about when you when you play them but <laughs> they are super fast they are quite resilient thanks to damage resilience and armor too <laughs> uh, and they charge uh, for the engineers they have this absolutely fantastic one use weapon oh uh, yes that is uh, Flamfost <laughs> and that is um, and it's an expression that Alicia loves. It's a game changer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, um, the Flamfost is basically, uh, how can I say? I'm going to describe it. It's a rocket that is a flame launcher. So, range three, explosion on, uh, blast on everything, and it causes a ton of damages on vehicles and causes suppression and ignores any save. It's, so, yeah, it's a, it's a flamethrower that, you know... Yeah, so it's really, really, really good. Uh, the only thing is that they do not have experts with it or anything. They only have one shot each, 
So after that, they are normal gorillas that like to hit stuff with their fists. Uh, but really this additional possibility of shooting infantry without any save or damage a vehicle, uh, again, without any save, it's really, really convenient. And it's really a unit that I, I, I would play two of them in the platoon without hesitation. That way you have your pure melee gorillas that run straight forward and put this pressure on your opponent right away. And you have your pioneers that can um, choose to stay a little back for a while and shoot some stuff that would come to you. Um, it's also a good solution uh, when you want to have a, I don't know, a reactive attack against a very fast unit as scout, or when you want to shoot this pesky Luftwaffe that dropped right behind you and you need to retaliate because they killed one of your gorillas, all these kind of things. So it's a very uh, in-your-face platoon. It's not the best in the game. It's really hard to play uh, because gorillas obviously have no uh, entire craft solution. So it's something where you're going to have to right away prioritize the rest of your army list to, to solve this problem. Um, honestly, you're gonna the the flame force gives you some anti infantry possibility, but again, you you ha only have so many of them, so you're gonna need also to think about additional anti infantry possibilities when you build your list, uh, because in melee the gorillas won't have enough firepower to to do that. Um, so um, that's that. Um, Additionally to the to the gorilla units, you also have the gorilla heroes that have been released. So so far, it's a it has been the limited premium release with the novel uh, that we released in 2016. Uh, but you have Samson, Wilfried, and Jacob, and the three of them are really in the spirit of the other gorillas. One of them uh, carries a flamethrower. Uh, the other one has uh, a, a saw, basically, <laughs> a circular saw <laughs> yeah. with, a cutting, with cutting. So that's really convenient in melee. And the last one is an expert with his punch and has first strike. Uh, so first, a gorilla with first strike is something absolutely scary uh, because it's a guy that is going to have two dice on everything uh, with with expert. So he's going to hit on a faction logo and a target. And we'll have first strike, so you won't have any possibility of retaliation if you're dead. So no. it's it's really, really scary. Um, the thing is good because you have Marcus that is going to be in one unit, and then you have three more units, and you can put the three gorillas in them, and you still have barely 60 points of armies that are taken. So that would be a shame not to do it. Uh, they are really good. They add a lot of value to each unit they are in. Uh, the flamethrower, for example, in a unit of normal gorillas that have no range weapon can be really useful to weed out uh, some some units that you're not sure that you could finish just in melee. Uh, the the saw that uh, Wilfried has has cutting, so that means that you can really, again, make your melee attacks a little bit more rela reliable because you're going to reroll every time you hit. So that's really that's really convenient. Uh, for me, there's no hesitation. If you play this platoon, you play all the heroes that are attached to it. <laughs> well, uh, makes sense. Tiny detail if you're not interested in the faction bonus. There's one gorilla that doesn't belong to the Blutkruts that belongs to the Luftwaffe. Yes, Goliath. The exactly. flying gorilla. And Goliath can benefit from the platoon. Hmm. Oh. oh, really? Yes, there's your, there's your anti-aircraft solution. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, you will lose your faction bonus for it because he's Luftwaffe. Yes. But you, you're, you know, well, he's an armor three. Armor three, assassin, damage resilient, flying. I mean, that's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Huh, I thought he had first strike, but I haven't looked at him in a while, so... No, 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 he's just... I, I guess it was the assassin. Yeah, it's the assassin which... that, that makes it really interesting. But really, again, 
huge firepower, um, good uh, against aircrafts. He, he will not take down one aircraft by himself because he only has one die that causes four damages on aircraft level two. Uh, but still, you know, when you need to finish this aircraft that resisted your Anrik that was shooting at it uh, before, suddenly you can finish it. And again, benefiting from the from the platoon, you can reactivate it and you can go for a second round on the same plane, for example. So fun stuff. Um, I would honestly play Goliath also just for the sake of the fun of having <laughs> so many gorillas in such a tiny space. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I could see that being very, very fun. It's definitely a platoon that you can play in addition to another platoon. Uh, again, the platoons that we mentioned before are always interesting. Uh, for example, on this one, I would definitely play the Storm Grenadier platoon with it. Yeah. So because it's really easy, and you would have some reactivations, some reactivation shenanigans all around, so it can be really fun. And it's uh, and it's your biggest solution with it is the anti or the uh, infantry. Yeah. You know, it's going. You know, the Sturm Grenadiers is going to bring in that anti-infantry that the gorillas don't. Exactly. So totally worth it. See, I. I would I would take a slightly different approach. Uh-huh. I would do I would do mercenaries with the gorillas because uh-huh. then I can add in say like meat grinder and you have a vehicle option. You can go in. You can use artillery to take out to kind of lighten the hits of the infantry units you're charging into. That's actually a very good idea. The meat grinder also has another advantage: is that it can provide smoke. For the gorillas, because another problem with the gorillas is that if they don't have cover, they're going to be in trouble. They only have an infantry safe, and even with a damage resilient, that doesn't make it like fantastically resilient. So having a cover suddenly makes them really way more resilient. And yep, meat grinder would be a good possibility. Uh, of course, you can go in faction and take a mortar, but I think that the you could play, for example, another platoon. Uh, that that could be really nice. Uh, the Tanya platoon, for example, is always useful. You still have the points for it, and you can still add the meat grinder with it. So that would be completely worth it. So yeah, and the and the Tanya platoon is going to give you a lot of um, anti infantry stuff as well. Defensive yes. tactics. Well, it's going to give you a lot of everything because w- when we go to mercenaries, uh, I will probably uh, be <clears throat> really enthusiastic about this platoon uh, because it's it's really a very good platoon with a lot of possibilities uh, and it, it's really a nerve-wracking platoon uh, for your opponent when he right. has these units that are all super resilient because they're just in cover and then suddenly once per game you're going to tell him oh by the way your fantastic roll of uh, 66 dice that all hit uh, please reward it because I don't like it <laughs> yeah, so. but at sixty-six dice, I'm just gonna laugh at you as I re-roll it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, please, please unless do. I get crap luck, I'm, I'm still gonna save on the faction logo and the target because I'm in cover, and then I have damage resilient. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove my two mercenaries that you would have killed, and then the rest is gonna jump on, uh, to your throat. So it's okay. It's really uh, it's really a very good platoon with a, with some very good units in. So, but we will talk about it later. But yeah, it's. Yeah. It's yeah. I think Nathan makes a, a lot of th- a lot a lot of sense here by uh, choosing to go with the uh, mercenaries uh, and trying to put some artillery in it. It really totally makes sense. And if you, you if you're clever with the way you've built your points too, you might have enough left over for an Emma if you are lucky enough to have one. <laughs> that, <you> can... <laughs> that could be fun. <laughs> Fixing the gorilla. <laughs> fixing the gorillas by just being being in the middle that would be fun yeah <laughs> well and that that was you know if you had a command squad as well i was thinking about that for the flamenfast uh-huh. reload those yes <sighs> yeah. gorillas are a little uh, more uh, versatile than the zombies because they can climb into a vehicle 
and they can be reactivated. They can uh, have officer actions applied to them. Yeah. So that's that's convenient. You can do some some fun stuff. So so yeah, gorillas, fun fun. <laughs> I'm just I'm disappointed. I can't. Uh use some captured gorillas for my SSU because it'd be pretty entertaining to drop them out of a helicopter. <laughs> you have Ivan. You don't need gorillas. <laughs> you have an Ivan. It's like it's like a that's gorilla. A, that's, he's he's like a gorilla with expert meat cleavers. Exactly. <laughs> What's not too love? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, so I think we have covered all of the platoons we wanted to uh, hit. Yeah. So looking at them all together, I you know I really like some of the some of the different you know shenanigans you know that we we've, we've talked about that you can mix and match. Um, you know, bringing in the Sturm Luther or uh, Sturm Grenadier platoon along with you know. Even the zombie swarm, you know, because you have you have the swarm running up the up the middle, the Sturm grenadiers around the sides. You know, it, it allows you that versatility in it, mm-hmm. uh, versatility and synergy. Yeah, of being able to you know operate and provide cover and threats for each other. These are actually very good keywords for the axis in general and especially the platoons that we've seen, yeah. Yeah. So, um, any final thoughts? Play more gorillas. <laughs> Play more gorillas. I mean, that's that's always always good advice. I swear you talk to Tim too much because I, I'm pretty sure that's what he says to you. Yes. Um, that's how he says hello. That's how he says hello. Gorillas! <laughs> more. <laughs> We need to see a gor- a gorilla command squad because we got to give one of those guys a wrench. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this summer um, that's going to be the spoiler of the, of, of the night. Uh, we are working on having a a hero gorilla. Uh, I'm not going to tell everything right now, but it's going to be interesting, uh, fluff wise. So, all right, the, it's going to be really linked to the story of the Blue Crutes and to the story of Marcus the First, the one that we're not playing because he's dead. Uh the one that was rumored to be uh Sigrid's father actually. Uh and it really linked to what Marcus the Second, the one we're playing, uh is actually trying to do. Uh having the gorillas not dependent on the humans. Nice. So I, I, I'm just curious as well. Fluff wise, do, do do the gorillas and dust do they talk? Yes, they do. They 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 really have a human brain, and because of that, they really ha- uh, acquire all the the abilities of the humans. So they can manipulate weapons, receive and give orders, and they can talk. They can communicate. So m- some of them communicate with just simple words, you know, one word and. Uh, showing stuff and simple ideas. Uh, some of them seem to have developed, like Marcus, an intelligence that is way superior, and they can formulate ideas with complete sentences. So a lot like Planet of the Apes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're probably pretty frustrated to be paired with these mindless zombies. They're like, you know, we are advanced. There, there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of. <laughs> They are also really treated like cannon fodder uh, by the by the Axis because they send them uh, really uh, on the front line all the time. Uh, for example, uh, in Blood and Thunder, the novel that we released in 2016, you have a very descriptive fight between these uh, Allied walkers in Antarctica against a bunch of a bunch of gorillas that charge them. And that basically destroy them completely. So yeah, that's that's really that. There's a really uh, a very good uh, how can I say that social denunciation underlying in uh, in the way gorillas are perceived in the in the world of dust. So yeah, uh, the the fact that they get these human brains uh, from fallen soldiers or 
uh, follow sometimes scientists or these kind of things make them really interesting to 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 play and to understand. So yeah, that's awesome. So. <laughs> The, everything anyone needs to take away from tonight is play more gorillas. Yes. <laughs> yes. And always think uh, th there's no outside the box in Axis because the box is so wide that you really have options all the time everywhere. So, and it's really an army where your troops are cheap enough and your vehicles are cheap enough that you can really forfeit the faction bonus to give you more options. Uh, to make the platoons shine even even more. So, all right, Nathan. Any last comments or remarks? I'm really looking forward to the SSU episode. <laughs> <laughs> I told you at the beginning we're not having any SSU episodes. SSU's <laughs> off the menu. <laughs> <laughs> All this talk about allies, access, you know, it's been great, but. Uh, actually, actually, the best part is, is all of a sudden one day I, I see a message from uh, Nathan and he goes, ooh, a new episode. And then he looks and he says, it's SSU. And he, he he's like, wait, I thought you said you didn't record any SSU. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice surprise. <laughs> I was I was just impressed that we managed to carry that on for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, well, that's that, you know that's that's a great thing. If you guys if you ha if you haven't been having enough fun yet with the fun allies, you know all the great stuff that they got, and then the crazy access and the range there, just just wait, just hold on to your hat because it's coming. SSU is is coming. <laughs> Bunch of really need to see this guy's face because he's he's just selling it. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's gonna, gone. he's he's gonna show up at a at a convention and you know he's gonna be like here's dust here's ssu here's the only faction you need <laughs> all these others they're just target practice <laughs> skyrocket uh, yeah, there's a 300% increase <laughs> and what? on that note um play more gorillas and have a good day Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.